people have proposed different ways of charting how much progress we've made towards full AGI. Mm -hmm. Because if you can come up with some line, then you can see where that line intersects with AGI and where that would happen on the yeah. x-axis. And so people have proposed, oh, it's like the education level. Like we had a high schooler and then th then they went to college with RL and they're going to get a PhD. Yeah, I don't like that one. Um, or then they'll <laughs> propose horizon link. So maybe they can do tasks that take a minute. Uh, they can do those autonomously. Then they can autonomously do tasks that take an hour, a human an hour, mm -hmm. a human a week, et cetera. Yeah. How do you think about what is the relevant um, y-axis here? What is the, how should we think yeah. about how AI is making progress? So I guess I have two answers to that. Number one, I'm almost tempted to like reject the question entirely because again, like I see this as an extension of computing. Have we talked about like how to chart progress in computing or how do you chart progress in computing since 1970s or whatever? What is the x-axis? So I kind of feel like the whole question is kind of like funny from that perspective a little bit. Um, but I will say, I guess like when people talk about AI and the original AGI and how we spoke about it when, we, um, when OpenAI started, AGI was a system you can go to that can do any task that is economically valuable, any economically valuable task yeah. at um, human performance or better. Okay, so that was the definition, and I was pretty happy with that at the time. And I kind of feel like I've stuck to that definition forever. Yeah. And then people have made up all kinds of other definitions, <laughs> but I, I like, I feel like I like that definition. Now, number one, the first concession that people make all the time is they just take out all the physical stuff uh, because we're just talking about digital knowledge work. Yeah. I feel like that's a pretty major concession compared to the original definition, which was like any task a human can do. I can lift things, etc. Yeah. Like AI can't do that, obviously. So okay, but we'll take it. Uh, what fraction of the economy are we taking away by saying, oh, only knowledge work? Um, I don't actually know the numbers. I feel like um, it's about 10 to 20%, if I had to guess, is, um, is only knowledge work. Uh, like someone could work from home mm -hmm. and perform tasks, something like that. Um, I still think it's a really large market. Uh, like, um, yeah, what is the size of the economy and what is 10, 20%? Like we're still talking about a few trillion dollars of, even in the U.S., of market share almost, yeah. or, or like work. Or, um, so still a very massive bucket. So, but I guess like going back to the definition, I guess what I would be looking for is uh, to what extent is that definition true? Uh, so um, are there jobs or lots of tasks? If we think of tasks as, you know, well, not, not jobs, but tasks, kind of difficult. Because the, the problem is like society will refactor based on the tasks that make up jobs compared to what's yeah. based on what's automatable or not. Yeah. But today, what jobs are replaceable by AI? So a good example recently was um, Jeff Hinton's prediction that radiologists would not be a job anymore. And this turned out to be very wrong in a bunch of ways, right? So radiologists are alive and well and growing, even though computer vision is really, really good at recognizing all the different things that they have to recognize in images. And it's just messy, complicated job with a lot of surfaces and dealing with patients and all this kind of stuff in the context of it. Um, so I guess I don't actually know that by that definition, AI has made a huge amount of dent yet. Um, but some of, the t some of the jobs maybe that I would be looking for have some features that I think make it very amenable to automation earlier than later. As an example, call center employees often come up, and I think rightly so, uh, because call center employees have a number of simplifying uh, properties with respect to what's automatable today. Um, their jobs are pretty simple. It's a sequence of tasks, and every task looks similar. Like you take a phone call with a person, it's 10 minutes of interaction or whatever it is, probably a bit longer. In my experience, a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you complete some task in some scheme and you change some database entries yeah. around or something like that. So you keep repeating something over and over again, and that's your job. Bec so basically, you do want to bring in the task horizon, how long it takes to perform a task. And then you want to also remove context. Like you're not dealing with different parts of services of companies or other customers. It's just the database, you and a person you're serving. Yeah. And so it's more closed, it's more understandable, uh, and it's purely digital. So I, I would be looking for those things. But even there, I'm not actually looking at full automation yet. I'm looking for an autonomy slider. And I almost expect that we are not going to instantly replace people. We're going to be swapping in AIs that do 80% of the volume. They delegate 20% of the volume to humans. And humans are supervising teams of five AIs doing the call center work that's more rote. Um, so I would be looking for new interfaces or new um, companies that provide some kind of a, a layer that allows you to uh, manage some of these AIs that are not yet perfect. Yeah. And then I would expect that across the economy. And a lot of jobs are a lot harder than call center employee. I wonder with radiologists, uh, I'm totally speculating. I have no idea how mm -hmm. what the actual workflow of a radiologist involves. But one analogy that might be applicable is... Um, when Waymo's were first being ruled out, there'd be mm. a person sitting in the front seat mm. 
And you just had to have them there to make sure that if something went really wrong, they're there to monitor. And I think even today, people are still watching to make sure things are going well. Um, RoboTaxi, who was just deployed, actually still has a person yep. inside it. And we, we could be in a similar situation where if you automate 99% of a job, that last 1% the human has to do is incredibly mm. valuable because it's bottlenecking everything else. Mm. And if it ended, had, if it was the case with like with radiologists where the person sitting in the front of the Uber or the front of the Waymo has to be specially trained for years in mm. order to be able to provide the last 1%, their wages should go, go up tremendously because they're like the one, per, the, the one thing bottlenecking yeah. wide deployment. Mm. So radiologists, I think their wages have gone up for similar reasons. If you're like the last bottleneck, you should, you're like, and you're not fungible, which like, you know, a, mm. a Waymo driver might be fungible with other mm. things. Um, so you might see this thing where like your wages go like whoop mm. and then until you get to ninety percent and then like just like that. Mm, and I then see. the last one percent is gone. I see. Um and I wonder if we're seeing similar things with radiology or salaries of call center workers or anything like that. Yeah. I think that's a, that's an interesting um question. I don't think we're currently seeing that with radiology or uh, and I don't have like um in my understanding, but I think radiology is not a good example, basically. I don't know why Jeff Hinton picked on radiology, uh, because I think it's an extremely messy, messy mm complicated profession. Yeah. Uh, so I would be a lot more interested in what's happening with call center employees today, for example, uh, because I would expect a lot of the road stuff to be uh, automatable today. And I don't have a first level access to it, but maybe I would be looking for trends of what's happening with the call center empl yeah. uh, employees. Maybe some of the things I would al also expect is maybe they are uh, swapping an AI, but then I would still wait for a year or two because I would potentially expect them to pull, pull back and actually rehire some of the people. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's been evidence that that's already been happening in the, okay. generally in like co companies that have been adopting AI, which I think yeah. is quite surprising. Yeah. And I, I also find what was really surprising, okay, um, AGI, right? Mm -hmm. Like a thing which should do everything and, okay, we'll take out physical work. Mm -hmm. So a thing which should be able to do all knowledge work. And what you would have naively anticipated that the way this regression would happen is like you would take a little task that a uh, consultant is doing, you take that uh, out of the bucket. You take a little task that... Um, an accountant is doing, you take that out of the bucket, uh, and then you're just doing this across all knowledge work. But instead, if we do believe we're on the path of AGI with the current paradigm, the progression is very much not like that. At least, mm -hmm. um, it just does not seem like consultants and accountants and whatever are getting like huge product improvement. Mm -hmm. It's very much like programmers are like getting more and more chills of the way of their work. If you do look at the revenues of these companies, mm -hmm. discounting just like normal chat revenue, which I think is mm -hmm. like, I don't know, it, it, th that's similar to like Google or something. Mm -hmm just looking at API revenues, it's like dominated by coding, right? So this thing, which is general, quote unquote, which yeah. should be able to do any knowledge work, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just overwhelmingly doing only coding. Yeah. And it's a surprising oh, yeah. way that you would expect like the AGI to be deployed. So I think there's uh, there's an interesting point here because I do believe coding is like the perfect first thing for uh, for for uh, these LLMs yeah. and uh, agents. And that's because coding has always fundamentally uh, worked around text. It's computer terminals and text, and everything is based around text. No. And LLMs, the way they're trained on the internet, love text. And so they're perfect text processors, yeah. and there's all this data out there, and it's just perfect fit. Um, and also, we have a lot of infrastructure pre-built for handling uh, code and text. So for example, we have uh, Visual Studio Code, or you know, right. um, your favorite um, uh, IDE showing you code. Um, and an agent can plug into that. So, for example, if an agent has a diff where it made some change, we suddenly have all this code already that shows all the differences to a code base uh, using a diff. So we've it's almost like we've pre-built a lot of the a lot of the infrastructure for code. Now, contrast that with some of the things that that don't enjoy that at all. So, as an example, like um, there's people trying to build automation not for coding, but for example, for slides. Like I saw a company doing slides. That's much much harder. And the reason it's much much harder is because slides are not text. Yeah, uh, slides are little graphics, and they're arranged spatially, and uh, there's visual component to it, and um, and slides uh, don't have this pre-built infrastructure. Like for example, if an agent is to make a different uh, change to your slides, how does a thing show you the diff? How do you see the diff? There's no, there's no, nothing that shows diffs for slides. Mm -hmm. So someone has to build it. Um, so it's just some of these things are not amenable to AIs as they are, which is text processors. And code, surprisingly, is. <laughs> if you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.